Stephen Curry and his big three rightfully get all the attention as one of the all-time great trios in Steph, Clay, and Dre were just the driving factors behind the dubs making their sixth finals appearance in eight years. You can't forget about the plus-minus leader of any player in 2022's playoffs, Andrew Wiggins, and a 22-year-old phenom of a combo guard who had a breakout year in Jordan Poole. But the weapons who casual fans will have no idea about consist of the 14th overall pick from last year's draft in the rookie Moses Moody, who stayed ready despite being out of the rotation and earned 13 minutes per game in the Western Conference Finals, a storyline that deserves more attention. My Kavon Looney video got demonetized, so you'll also see a breakdown of the Dubs' unsung hero at the 5 spot, who ran 396 feet per minute back in Game 2, more ground covered than Stephen Curry. Looney Tunes also had 21 points in that game and 18 rebounds in Game 5 to close out the Mavs. Then there's Nemanja Bialica, who gets a lot of hate from Warrior fans, but he's quietly shot 54% from the field in 12 minutes on average, over 10 playoff appearances in 2022. Showing you they're anything but a top-heavy roster, this video breaks down why the Golden State Warriors second layer has everyone in shambles. Before continuing, only 10.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please drop a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DeepLaHoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Coming up, we'll get to the returns for the finals of Gary Payton II and Andre Iguodala, along with every piece to the Warriors' imposing second layer. First, we have to give some praise to the team's all-time great player. Three-time scoring and NBA champion, two-time MVP, and the NBA's all-time leader in three-pointers made, Stephen Curry, is one of the greatest to lace him up, no matter what happens in 2022's finals. Having said that, his legend status would reach a whole different stratosphere if he can take down either a stacked Boston Celtics or Miami Heat team and win his first career finals MVP. It would mean tying LeBron James in championship rings, winning his first chip without Kevin Durant since 2015, and potentially marking his place among fans across the world as undeniably our game's best player. On Thursday night, Stephen Curry's Warriors joined Michael Jordan's Bulls from 91 to 98, Magic Johnson's Lakers from 84 to 91, the Jerry West version of the Lakers from 66 to 73, and Bill Russell's Boston Celtics from 63 to 70, as one of five NBA teams of all time to make the finals six times in the span of eight seasons, and people said the dynasty was over. While it's starting to feel normal that the Warriors just made the finals, they've actually defied both the odds and the disrespectful doubters who predicted they'd have little to no chance of being in this position. ESPN's Power Index gave Golden State a 10% chance to make the NBA Finals entering the All-Star break. It was just over two years ago, after the Warriors traded D-loading for Air Canada, that mainstream analyst Nick Wright said, quote, Andrew Wiggins is a bad basketball player. He's owed $95 million over the next three years, starting next year. It's unspeakable that the Warriors did this. It's all over for them. We'll never see Steph in another NBA Finals, ever. My fellow Torontonian Andrew Wiggins and the GOAT three-point marksman Stephen Curry have proved those takes courtesy of Fox Sports, not just to be dead wrong, but flat-out embarrassing. Regardless of what happens in the finals against either Miami or Boston, Steph and Andrew deserve a personal apology from Nick Wrong. It's time to give this man Stephen Curry some damn respect. He's transcended basketball into a three-point shooting base game, and of course, that's not for no reason. It's because he's torn apart top defensive game plans one after the other with his once-in-a-lifetime gravity. Curry quite literally made every other organization in the NBA rethink what it means to construct a championship roster and put to rest the age-old phrase made popular by Charles Barkley that jump shooting teams can't win a title. Perennial DPOY candidate and former Defensive Player of the Year Draymond Green had a lot to say after the Warriors made the finals, but his best statement was, quote, No one has proved they can beat us when we're whole, and that's still the case. Dre's got a point about that, considering in the 36 games during the season when he and Curry were both healthy, Golden State went 29-7 with the best winning percentage in the NBA. Klay Thompson's 32-piece to close out the Mavericks proves he's in top condition, 
and it was awesome to see Clay light it up. But now moving on to the players you rarely hear about. Professor Big Shots, in one of the Warriors free agent pickups from last summer, Nemanja Bjelica, played a playoff most 22 minutes in Game 5 of the Western Conference Finals, being a plus 4. He contributed some excellent screens. Belly also scored 5 points, including a 3-pointer, while dishing out 3 assists and grabbing 6 rebounds. Steve Kerr spoke on Bielitsa's production in the Game 5 closeout, saying, If I were smarter, I would have played him earlier in this series. Those minutes were huge. Warrior fans on Twitter like to make him the scapegoat at times, but Belly's always been a solid two-way big who's bulky enough to guard power forwards, and of course the now 34-year-old continues to make a living off spacing the floor out with his shooting as a stretch big. Then there's the underrated locomotive at the 5 spot in Kavon Looney, who's quietly been the only traditional center to survive the modern era of small ball, at least this deep into the playoffs. ESPN or TNT won't mention his name, but where would the Warriors be without Kavon's presence on the glass? Whether it's keeping possessions alive, or putting a body on and boxing out beasts like the two-time MVP in Jokic, Looney's physicality and 99 overall hands allow him to easily snatch either loose balls away or tough rebounds in traffic. Somehow I've gone this entire video covering the Warriors' depth without mentioning Otto Porter Jr. Automatic was one of the best 3 and D guys in the NBA when he was the third option for the Washington Wizards back in his prime. Now, he'll be a defensive weapon to shut down either the likes of Tatum and Brown or Jimmy Butler and Max Struess. The 7 foot wingspan and footwork for his size from OPJ on defense has been an under talked about winning element all season long for the Doves. I just slightly broke down how Otto Porter Jr. could be a weapon on Boston or Miami's wing players, but Gary Payton II returning from the gruesome hit he took on the fast break a few weeks ago, and also the poised veteran in Max Kellerman's favorite player Andre Iguodala, that also gives opposing wing players a few other versatile bodies to deal with. Maybe the most unfairly under-talked about warrior is their rookie Moses Moody, who stayed ready all year and earned both the respect of his all-time great teammate Stephen Curry, but more importantly, some much-deserved playing time in the conference finals. Moody was one of the Warriors' first-round draft selections last year, next to Jonathan Kaminga, as Moses was picked 14th overall. He didn't exactly light up the NBA in his first year. He hasn't been relied upon much in the playoffs either, until the last four games of the Western Conference Finals against the Mavericks. After Damian Lee struggled early in Game 2 off the pine, Moody earned 10 minutes of playing time in the fourth and did pretty well, helping the Warriors close out the Mavericks in a tight game. He then saw 16 minutes of action in the Warriors' Game 3 win. He didn't score much, with 6 total points to his name in those two outings. He followed that up by dropping 10 points in Game 4 and 7 points in Game 5. But back on Monday, Moody received some high praise from Stephen Curry, who's seen the rookie work hard off the court, despite having no guarantees about playing time. Curry said, quote, He's just an extremely talented, high IQ young guy that works tirelessly to be ready. The behind the scenes, how he works, going game speed, just consistent effort every day, going back and forth from the G League, all that stuff, you can tell someday it's going to pay off because his number is going to be called. Curry's rookie appeared in 52 games and started 11 of them during the regular season, also spending time with the G League Santa Cruz dubs. Just like Jonathan Kaminga, the Warriors didn't need Moody to come in and play heavy minutes right away, and as Steve Kerr has said all year, that can be tough on a first round pick who's used to being a key contributor in college. However, according to Curry, Moody's always maintained a positive attitude in practice. Of course, that helped him when his number was finally called during the West Finals. Moody didn't just suddenly become a poised rookie in the playoffs. It was, as Curry said, a buildup of hard work and preparation, staying ready and growing on the fly as a 19-year-old kid. Who was the most underrated contributor to the Warriors making their sixth finals appearance of the decade? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so be sure to leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Shout out to anything under the sun. Pause to read his answer as well as the honorable mentions. I hope you guys have a great one. DFlow signing off.